uh, Jim as well, um, maybe Jeff as well. Uh, you know, war world, you guys know about war world, right? I mean, I know it, it, was, it, 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 it was first presented in the comic books in the 1980s, 40 years. So this is the first time we're seeing it manifest uh, in, in the future. How did you guys land on, on presenting the world? Well, originally, me and Jim, we were, uh, we mentioned to Jim Lee at BC as far as part of our continuity, but Jim had the working title of its role science, it was going to be loosely uh, based on Superman and Batman's adventures together whenever he got in trouble or kidnapped. But as we moved along in the storyline that these guys were working on, we realized, well, yeah, we've got more to do here, we probably need more of as as a device for the you know, future storyboards. Jeff, as a director, I mean, tell us what it feels to you about setting the action. You know, such a... Uh, a he got the CR rating. Thanks. Maybe a couple of things. He tried to kill the horse. <laughs> but, uh, it's a true story. This was really exciting because we got to do something of a spaghetti western and a Conan Barbarian and a um, film noir kind of film all into one. And you don't often get a chance to do that um, as an animator. Um, usually, it's, especially with superheroes, it's a modern setting. Um, but to take these heroes that we all see usually and put them in these unusual settings and unusual. Yes, it's, it's, it's the first tomorrow verse uh, history told in the anthology novel. I'm so excited. I love how each segment in sort of fashion in its own genre, as you mentioned, Western, uh, Swords and Sorcery, classic sci fi. Uh, I know the writers, you guys, you guys divided the hunger. Uh, there, there's three parts of the film, and there are three, three writers who are going to be here with us this evening. Shout out to her. But, uh, you know, Jeremy and Ernie, Jeremy and Ernie, you guys set up your segments and talk a little bit about what inspired them? Yeah, I mean, I, what was interesting is when we wrote this was like, it was very close to the end of COVID. When we're sitting in the back of your you know, patio of our Let me be clear, when we were sitting outside, the events very far away from each other. And at the point where we were talking about the story, and I do recall then we started talking about the barbarian, the barbarian section. It was not going on. Well, yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, but, but when we started talking about the like, sword and sorcery, I was like, that is fine. And it was interesting about this is there's a lot of sections that at first you're going to be a little confused about where are we, what's going on, and that's intentional because we want to make the viewer uncover the mystery along with the characters that are uh, uncovering it on the screen. And um, the section I got is like uh, a dream come true. And uh, it was great that Bush is in love with uh, Scar so much as I did. And, you know, so it was great. Yeah, I mean, most of the time when you see War World, it centers on gladiatorial combat, and Jim wanted to do something that was a little more out there, and uh, I, I think pretty, pretty great. So, the two sections that were left, the Superman and Wonder Woman, uh, Josie, thank God, uh, was said, hey, I, I've written a lot of Wonder Woman, and I always get it, I, I want to do Superman this time, because I had no idea. Superman, whereas I thought we had a pretty good idea for Wonder Woman in the Old West, which I hadn't seen, so that kind of excited me uh, to make her Clint Eastwood, the Clint, Clintina Eastwood, the woman with no name coming in, uh, you know, seeing corruption and cleaning up the town. I was like, and it's a show. Okay. So I've known Ernie for a long, long time, and he's more comfortable uh, expressing his emotions with me than uh, not that some writers are. And I, in the very beginning, I said, what about Batman in the Old West? And he made a face. I was like, what? I don't think we've seen that. What about what? Yeah. I, I asked Ernie about this backstage, and he said, it was, it was 
that I get. Just confirm. Again, we're going to try to avoid spoilers. But this is something I'm just going to tease. There is a, an amazing Pulp Fiction homage. The first act of this movie, we won't say what it is, but it might involve John Hex Bass. I said too much. I said too much. I need to know it. The animation is once again striking, it's beautiful. Which, what would you say about visual style? You guys, what is it? Well, I mean, I, we've been doing this style for the last four years, so it's like the long Halloween and Man of Tomorrow, Justice Society, and so on and so on. So it was still a continuation of that style because of the continuity of the stories. Um, I, we just kind of watched the style here and there. As, as we went along, we saw things that worked, we saw things that didn't work, so we just kind of scooped it out a bit. But it's still in the jet, the same type of style. And I think it works for all three genres. I mentioned at the top how glorious uh, some of the blood was flat. And uh, I could just write in there Wonder Woman shoots the bad guys and they fall over the dead. Well, how? And what we see is all up to that. So. They deserve the credit. <laughs> I mean, who who ultimately got to decide how much blood splatter there was going to be? What was that conversation? Was that for a while? Me and Jeff, we were, you know, we looked at the scenes when they came back, and it's like, we got a bad sequence, you know, where the boy just finished. And we couldn't, you know, animate the whole act, so we did the aftermath, and it's where people are dead on the ground, you know, spewed through it, and so. It didn't look realistic enough unless you apply some it's, it's the same thing, too, if you're challenging that first week. How would you do that in the world? Yeah, it's a beautiful world. Thank you for that segue, because, I mean, of course, we've got to talk about our trio of heroes, the Trinity, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. I mean, we not only see them immersed in these new worlds and these new genres, but we're also very in the, the, the film circle. Presents a mystery where they're kind of as confused as, as viewers might be in, in terms of trying to solve what, what, what the hell is happening. Uh, what do you guys think about that aspect and sort of getting with these iconic heroes in the new sandbox, the new sandboxes here? What can we say about that? Uh, uh, you know what? You'll be maybe less confused if you've read the title of the, of the movie. But, um, but Batman has to figure it out, and he doesn't even know he's Batman. So it's a real challenge for the world's greatest detective. Uh, well, we gotta give props to the voice actors. Start with Jess Nackles. Yes. 
something and I said, just wait, just wait. You know, she wanted to be a cat woman. I said, no, 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 you don't have to be a cat woman. So I wanted to pledge one of them. Yeah. And she said, free. I mean, you never know what they did. And I mean, a lot of today, and they can make it to act and make it work together and do their voices. We used to do that a lot, but, you know, during COVID, uh, we couldn't. So they had to be either in their home or in the studio or we were in, uh, at home looking at it from the Zoom. And you, you weren't allowed to put the actors in the room together. So, uh, but either way, the way they did it, it counts. Uh, this is a good time to mention we are going to be taking some questions from you guys tonight. Uh, in just a couple minutes. So if anyone has a question, you can line up by the black curtain over on this side of the stage. You can head over there. Um, I mean, we've got to talk about you.
but anything's possible in the next few years. You know, it's an old school project. Hey. Alright, so I want to know if y'all have any plans for Bizarro or Bizarro World, or maybe if y'all explore that area uh, on film more. I'm just wondering, because that's one of my favorite characters, and I named myself after uh, Bizarro. So I'm DJ Ken Clark. We are the Bizarro, but of course, we have one Bizarro. We did a bizarro episode in Justice League Unlimited, that was a main series we enjoyed. Yeah. Jensen High is strong. 
subjects. <laughs> All right, step up, step right up. Uh, the, there's been a uh, debate about certain comic book characters who are known to be PG, and people want to make them rated R, but you have to change certain things. How did you keep these characters true, even though this is an R-rated movie? <laughs> I, I think any of these movies that we do like this, um, the first priority is to make sure each of the characters. So, you know, even though we're putting each one of them like this in a different setting and they don't have memory of what they are, we have to see through the decisions they would make from the core of what they would do. So, we're building this and telling the story, all of our decisions from the right all the way down to storyboarding through the end, like, based on us growing up with these characters and building these characters and then um, making sure that when we have a situation or whatever they're faced with visually or conceptually, that we only answer from what we know those characters should be done. But do you have something you want to add? No, I think Jeff made myself a lot, but it's basically the characters are out of their element, so it's a lot of things they actually do in these stories. Can I just add that I think also the characters have this pliability for maturity level. Like when I was a kid, yeah, I think it was much more innocent in certain mediums in the dark night in terms of them. And you're like, that's not the kid. And so even though the core character is the same, you can tell much more mature stories and still retain that uh, core essence, which is neat. Hi, uh, I was wondering from the universe that you're building, uh, what characters you guys would like to get into the mix next? Well, obviously, Shiny Knight, oh, and Viking Prince, and uh, all, all the Prince Valley characters. Uh, that's my great project. For Captain America. Oh, I'm David. Um, out of all the characters in your universes and in your, your minds, um, what, which which do you think did not get validated with their own um, story that you would want to hear out? Some of them might be back 
in continuity, so we'll see. I just want to shout out to Josie Campbell, uh, one of the writers on this, wrote our niche movie and uh, did a great job. Well done. Thank you. 
say the same thing. It's, it's an incredible honor to do this kind of stuff. Um, taking these great scripts and trying to turn it into a feast for the eyes has been incredibly challenging, but also... It is a feast for the eyes, <laughs> as you will soon see. <laughs> it, it, it's really rewarding to be able to have these guys bring out these kind of different worlds and be able to express them and stories tell play these roles and these other guys have done before us. Um, incredibly fun and tiring and I think it's filled with honor. So yeah, I think this teach me all I don't like any of this Guys, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> 